Evening, everyone. Welcome to The Next Revolution. Last week on the podcast, I had a great conversation with Kevin McCarty. No, not that one. McCarty, the California state legislator who just got a bill passed that will help turn unused government buildings into housing, something that also helps revitalize downtown areas and fight crime. Exactly the kind of positive, practical, common sense thing politics should be about. But instead, the people in charge seem obsessed with all the drama and theater. Last week was just the prelude to what will be a spectacle of incompetence and chaos in the U.S. House of Representatives. What we have here is a recipe for a lot, of, a lot more fights, a lot of dysfunction, a lot of chaos. This House, as dysfunctional as it is now, will continue to be even more dysfunctional. It's going to be utter chaos in the House. Chaos, dysfunction, they're still going on about it more than a week after the speaker vote. But why? Debate isn't chaos and dysfunction, it's democracy. Didn't all these people tell us they were for that? But when the left tried to rebrand debate as dysfunction, it tells us that they don't actually like democracy or debate. What they want, what they expect, is for everyone to just shut up and fall in line, parrot the groupthink at all times, no dissent allowed. With very few exceptions, like our friend Congressman Ro Khanna, who has the Twitter files revealed in private, as well as public, does stand up for democracy and pluralism. With very few exceptions, the Democrats and the media's mindset these days is not democratic. It is totalitarian. You see that exposed all the time. You see it in their ban on gas stoves, which they then desperately tried to deny, even though they're already doing it starting nearly four years ago in where else? Berkeley, California, then spreading across California, across the country to New York. And at the same time as the Biden people and their media puppets yelp that it's not true, we're not banning gas stoves. The Biden administration is in court supporting Berkeley's ban. There's no serious justification for this. It's not positive, it's not practical. Cooking for friends and family is a central part of our humanity. Cooking on electric and induction stoves is horrible. So why do they want to do this to us? Because it's pure ideological theater. Just like all the other nonsense they're pushing under the banner of their climate zealotry. Banning real beef in favor of fake factory meat full of chemicals as Bill Gates now demands. Banning non-electric vehicles years before we have the infrastructure to make it all work or even an electricity grid with enough reliable clean energy to power it. I'm all for a well-managed, sensible energy transition, but the climate zealots are not. They won't expand carbon-free nuclear power. Now, they're even undermining decentralized solar power. All their endless micromanaging of our lives, it's not about fighting climate change, it's about fighting us. That's why they end up looking like a bunch of miserable, joyless, Puritan, anti-human zealots bossing us around to make themselves feel virtuous. But these neo-totalitarians aren't just trying to control what we do. In the most sinister and anti-American way, they're now trying to control what we say. On one level, it's laughable. The University of Southern California this week banning the word field, as in field trip, because it's racist or something. Stanford University banning the word American because, oh, who cares? It's not worth taking seriously. What is worth taking seriously is the federal government colluding with big tech to control what we say. As we were the first on television to lay out, infiltrating Twitter, Facebook, all of them at the highest levels, outsourcing their illegal and unconstitutional censorship to a shadowy government-funded network of nonprofits designed to evade the First Amendment. The instruments of government power, the FBI, CIA, DHS, DOJ, working hand in glove with Democrat politicians, Democrat academics, and Democrat backing big tech to silence and censor Americans. There was a time when the left championed civil liberties and freedom of speech, when the left viewed the intelligence agencies and the security state with skepticism and suspicion. But now the once liberal left has been commandeered by this neo-totalitarian mindset that embraces the surveillance state in pursuit of partisan ends. Just this week, Jim Clyburn, of all people, turning into a fawning mouthpiece of the security state when asked about Republicans investigating the weaponization of federal agencies. 
But we also saw this week exactly why Jim Clyburn and the Democrats are so relaxed about that weaponization. The weapon isn't aimed at them. If it was, I think we all know what would have happened if it was a Republican former vice president who, after six years, was discovered the week before an election stashing top secret classified documents in an office to which his corrupt son had requested extra keys for a Chinese government official, but then covered up that information so it wouldn't derail his party's midterm election campaign, continued to cover it up, even as his hand-picked hyper-partisan attorney general appointed a special counsel to investigate his potential opponent in the next presidential election for doing the same thing, then found another stash of classified documents in his garage, found, by the way, by his personal lawyers rummaging around while the same hyper-partisan attorney general sent in the FBI to raid his political opponent's house, continued to cover all this up as more documents were found, finally admitted the truth when months later the media broke the story, sent the press secretary out to lie and say, that's it, there's no more top secret documents stashed away, only to come back the next day and say, wait, actually, there are some more in the room next to the garage, but that really is it now. The search is over and there are no more classified documents. Before a couple of days after that, the personal lawyers again, not the FBI, saying, well, actually, we did find some more pages of top secret documents, but it's okay. You can trust us because we did the right thing. Americans are tired of the brazen hypocrisy and double standards. They're angered by the two-tier justice system, shocked at the neo-totalitarianism and increasingly in revolt against it, especially as they realize that the people in charge can't even get the basics right. An air traffic control system, three decades old and apparently six years away from being updated, even as the geniuses in Congress pass a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill with more money for EV charging stations than for air traffic control. In California, where they've somehow managed to create a situation where we have floods and a drought at the same time, this is the actual chaos and dysfunction, not political debate in the Congress, but a complete collapse of competent governance. We don't want all the theater and the virtue signaling and the extremism. We just want positive, practical solutions to our problems. Common sense and competence. That's the next revolution we need. Tell us what you think on a new free Twitter at NextRevFNC and at Steve Hilton X and share this message when we post it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.